Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very special um, Day of Invitation Assembly. Um, a particular warm welcome, obviously, to our class of 24, also to their families and friends that um, are joining us here this morning. Um, I'll also extend uh, a welcome to some of our Year 11 parents who, who are here this morning, given we, we will pass on that, um, that symbolic baton to the um, new student leaders very, very soon, and that comes at a little later in our assembly. But to the graduating class of 24, well, we're here. I am thrilled for every single one of you. I'm also equally um, thrilled for your families. Those families and those who have raised you, for them, this is a really, really special day. They are very, very proud of you. Your teachers have similar sentiments. Yes, we have had high expectations of you, but those high expectations have been a part of a larger effort to prepare you for the greater challenges ahead. Under the guidance of your college and your families, you've reached this impressive milestone in, the life, in your life with great integrity and with great honour. During our discussions, you have been very generous in sharing your own individual hopes and dreams. And as T. Lawrence once wrote, the dreamers of the day are dangerous, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. So to say that I have enjoyed our conversations would be a gross understatement. For the benefit of the audience here this morning, I can report that the hopes and dreams of the class of 24 include careers in agriculture, aviation, architecture, engineering, nursing, medicine, law, teaching, motorsports, radio broadcasting, finance, music, fashion, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, oceanography, science, logistics, writing, sport, international relations, interior design, business, and the arts. We've even workshopped the possibility of one student opening a jazz cafe at the base of a mountain. I have heard how many hope to travel experience different cultures, stay connected to friends, and many have expressed the hope to continue to be happy. Year 12, your contribution during your time here at the college has been broad and your impact has been for the good. Today is the opportunity to recognise each of you individually and we do this because each of you is important. Each of you has contributed to the college and each of you leaves a legacy. But what will it take for you to truly flourish in your lives beyond the college? Well, first and emphatically, I'm confident that as you venture beyond our college, you'll be strengthened by our Ignatian tradition, which is so ingrained in all you do. As a college steeped in this tradition, we are of course passionate about the development of your conscience and your character, and as a community, we're really proud to acknowledge that development today. I was again privileged this year to be in the audience of the Atticus Finch Justice Award Finals to hear 10 students eloquently and passionately explore this year's theme, which was the privilege of choice. During those speeches, I was reminded that the development of character does not originate from our Ignatian tradition, of course. Aristotle, yes, the same Aristotle that lived in 320 BC, spoke about what he called the golden mean. As the mathematicians will be aware, um, the gold, a mean is um, an average, but what Aristotle was referring to was the desirable middle ground between two extremes, emphasizing the importance of moderation, balance in life, and the privilege of choice. Virtuous behaviors, he argued, explored the right proportion of conduct rather than succumbing to extremes. That's what it takes to truly flourish in life, Aristotle would argue. For example, he would say that courage can be seen as the middle ground between recklessness and cowardice. Generosity, the middle ground between extravagance and stinginess. In Aristotle's framework, good character is critical to human flourishing. And he was a strong proponent of personal responsibility being fundamental to the, to the development of that character. 
It can be easy at times to externalise and blame others for misfortune. Instead, the privilege of choice can be very real. According to Aristotle, living a good life involves cultivating virtues such as courage, wisdom and justice. These are the virtues important to a flourishing life, he argued. Courage, wisdom and justice. The views of Aristotle, of course, have extended over time. By way of example, after his American presidency, Theodore Roosevelt delivered a brilliant speech in the University of Paris. In that speech, he articulated a powerful vision of an education based not just on the acquisition of knowledge, but also on the cultivation of virtue and the importance of action. For Roosevelt, the role of education in this process was not only one of information, but one of human formation in character and wisdom. Education must contain much besides book learning in order to be really good, he said. For while there is a need for a sound body, and even more for a sound mind, above mind and body stands character. Character includes things like self-restraint, self-mastery, common sense, and the power of accepting individual responsibility, he said. A powerful message on the principles of a quality education that still stands the test of time. And a powerful message that you have also had the privilege of hearing during your time here at the college. As well as the development of your conscience and character, education in our Ignatian tradition is also about the proper critique of culture. Just as we critique our own culture here at the college. As Martin Luther King said, our lives begin to end the day we fall silent about the things that matter. That has been the invitation to you here at the college and will continue to be as you move beyond into the big cities and new cultures, which I know many of you are excited to explore. Our great challenge, your great challenge, remains the calling out of what limits human flourishing in any culture. My hope and dream for you is that when you do face those limitations of human flourishing and you do call them out, you'll do so well informed by the values that you've learnt here at our college. I want to impress on you all to always be ambassadors of John 23rd. Be kind and good to people you meet on the way. Dream big and be optimistic about whatever it is that you're doing. But what do you really want? This is a question that our founder, St Ignatius, would have us continually ask of ourselves. What is it that we really want? In response, Ignatius would implore us to peel away our ambitions and fears and get in touch with the deepest desire in our hearts. Ignatius believed that when you get in touch with what the poet Hopkins called the dearest freshness deep down things, you'll find God there to help you answer the question that important question, what do you really want? I recently read a book by Eddie Jacku um, titled The Happiest Man on Earth. I was particularly taken by the title given Eddie Jacku was a Holocaust survivor and had experienced so much loss and tragedy and pain in his life. Without going into all the details um, of his struggles here today, suffice to say if anyone had the right to be bitter and angry, Eddie Jacku did. Considering he had suffered so much loss, how could he be the happiest man on earth? Well, he wrote his book at the age of 100. And though Eddie has since passed, the happiest man on earth lived by and shared the following when he spoke publicly. I share these words with you in the hope that you might also consider them as you take on your new adventures. Kindness is the greatest wealth of all. May you always have lots of love to share, lots of good health to spare, and lots of good friends who care. On behalf of the college, I bid you farewell. You will all remain in our hearts. God bless you, 12, and thank you.